Good afternoon, guys. Laura from Hedgehog's Homestead here. Today, we are gonna make my favorite canning thing, cowboy candy. So, let's get to it. So, I have my uh, food processor here. I'm gonna put this blade on. You can either use this blade or this blade if you just want to cut it a little slices like they recommend in the recipe um, it's good for this but I like it in little bits little pieces like grated like this um, thing you use here and that's just the way I like it because I eat it in all kinds of stuff and it's easy to mix it's easy to mix it in a recipe that way so I get my I've already chopped the tops off of all my jalapenos and in the recipe it says three pounds but this recipe makes so much sauce um, this was a five pound bag of jalapenos once you cut off the tops um, you're looking a little less so I'm gonna go with it um, if I didn't know this recipe I would do it exact but um, that's just how I roll I've learned this recipe, I've done this recipe. I've done this recipe several times because I like this stuff so much. Um, this recipe and I like to make uh, this recipe and I'd, I'd like to show you that. So I'm just gonna grind this all up and then I'll put my ingredients in the pan. Um, so I just, Costco now is selling these jalapenos in five pound bags so it's easy. Um, great if you're, I can't grow enough here in the Northwest in my backyard. Um, I don't have a big enough space. Um, so I always buy some jalapenos because we like them spicy around here. Okay. It's really fast. Doing it with your food processor. So I'm going to stop there. Okay. And so there was a red jalapeno in there. That one's going to be nice and hot. Once they get red, they are hot. Well, they're hot anyways, but you know what I mean. They're hot turf. on there and then continue. ingredients in a pot and okay so we need what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my vinegar in and then I'm gonna put it on the stove and start warming it and then I'm gonna add my sugar so this recipe calls for three pounds of fresh jalapenos uh, washed and ready to go, cut up. And then 
I'm just going to leave my skip six cups of sugar. But again, I'm going to add that in later. Turmeric. We need one half teaspoon of turmeric. Celery seed, a half teaspoon. Celery seed, and it uh, goes a long way. And then we need granulated garlic, three tablespoons. Or teaspoons, sorry, three teaspoons. That would have been a mistake, huh? I can scrape them off flat. She always want to do that. One, two, and three. Oh, it smells amazing. I love the smell of garlic. Okay, and then cayenne pepper. You need one teaspoon of cayenne. has me make, um, when we have bell peppers, we get those really long peppers from Costco. Hopefully I'll have some, some of those come up in the garden that they save the seed from. Um, and um, this mild pepper jalapeno candy. And he puts less sugar in his too. Okay, so I'm going to start warming this up on the stove. And then I'm going to add my six cups of sugar. Now you got to realize you're only probably going to put a taste tablespoon of this on whatever you're eating. So it's really not a lot of sugar that you're getting at one time. Four cups. And then two more cups. I like to use the organic sugar. Most canning recipes call for a lot of sugar. going in your food. Okay. So that can go in the sink too. Okay, the sugar's melting down in there. And once this comes to a boil, I'm gonna turn it down for about five minutes. Get you going. Just gotta kind of keep on stirring it. You want to get get it to a rolling boil, then you're gonna turn it down. I will have all the recipe details. because there's a whole lot of, you bring it to a boil, and then you let it simmer for five minutes, and then you bring it up to a boil again, then you add the hot pe the peppers, and then you
so a rolling boil is, it's boiling so much that me stirring it is not changing the boil. So if I can change the boil by stirring it just like that, then it's not at a rolling, rolling boil. This smells amazing. It is because I always have juice left over and I never want to throw it away. Sometimes I cook two rounds in one um, in the same sauce because you always have sauce left over after you do this. Um, I do save the sauce now and I jar that by itself. I put it in a jar and it's great marinade for chicken. So that's what we do with the extra sauce. Okay, so looks like we got a rolling boil here. So now I'm gonna add my peppers. You don't want to put whoa. <laughs> And then you're going to bring it back up to that rolling boil. I take out those big pieces later that didn't get processed through the processor very well. And then we stir that up and then we want it to get to a rolling boil again. And once it's at a rolling boil, we're going to turn it down to a simmer for exactly four minutes. So we're gonna let this simmer for four, for five minutes, bring the heat back up to a rolling boil. One of the things I love about this recipe is um, this is my um, Christmas gift recipe. Um, I my my little brother loves it. Um, my my nephew loves it. It's just a great gift to give. Um, so, okay, we are getting to that rolling boil now. So anyway, so I, I just give it away a lot and <laughs> and then I'm like, oh no, I'm out, like right now, and I have to make more. Okay, it's getting to that rolling boil. Okay, not quite there because I can stir it away. Now when it stops going away, then I'm gonna turn it down and I'm gonna put a timer on for exactly four minutes. That's what the recipe says. So we're gonna follow that, the, that part of the recipe. Now I got this recipe from 1870s Homestead. I'm sharing it with you. And I'll try to get all of the instructions in there. Maybe I can scan it. And that's what a rolling boil looks like. But it's still not very strong. those big pieces out whenever I can. Now this stuff is sticky, so be prepared. Uh, make sure that you have, this is one, one of those recipes. I make sure I'm using all my canning um, prep um, kit. So your funnel is gonna be very important in this recipe.
Okay, so it's not really stirring away anymore. So now I'm gonna turn this down. There we go. Siri, give me a timer for Over this bowl at this point because when it's boiling like this it um, gives out some fumes sometimes you even want to put on your fan but I'm not going to do that because are they, otherwise you guys won't be able to hear So because this is burnt or boiling sugar, it can really leave a sticky mess. So I do this on a towel. Okay, so we're letting that simmer for Okay, it has been my four minutes, so I'm going to turn it off. And the timer's off. Get my jars out of the dishwasher. They're hot, but not too hot. And I'm just going to start with four jars and keep these back in here. Now I've got my funnel and I'm putting that over the jar. I bring the, the pot as close. Yeah, that's good. All right, now I'm gonna get my slotted spoon. And because you wanna fill this out with up with the meat first and then you're going to grab a regular spoon and then fill it up. Even really getting all the sugar that's in this, it's not like jam. There is, yes, there is a lot of sugar but it's not as much as you would have I'm gonna make sure you guys can see what I'm doing. A little bit of liquid in here yet, but now you can take the seeds out and then it won't be so hot for you. Actually, the seeds aren't really what makes the pepper hot, from what I understand. I've learned it recently. You want to eat the dimension of headspace. It's just like jam. This little measuring tool here. Move this other way so you can see, probably. And I can go like this, and I can still actually put more in there. Probably it though. 
Now, with this recipe, because of all the sugar content in it, you really wanna make sure that you are um, wiping the rims of these. It cannot be forgotten in this recipe. So I have a paper towel right here, and I just get some white vinegar on it. And I've got it on my towel, and I wipe it down. And I have my clean lid. Yeah, it just drips all down the side of it. So you can see that it comes off on there. Put my lid straight on. And then I tighten it finger tight. Now this jar is really hot. I'm used to touching these things, but um, just for fair warning for you guys, okay? Okay, and then we start with the next jar. Well, <laughs> it ate my spoon, it's so hot. No, I'm just kidding. That was probably broken from something else. It's That spoon is probably 20 years old probably broken because I put it in the dishwasher like you're not supposed to. It's so sticky you'll find little sticky this everywhere when you do jam or this this kind of stuff it's the same kind of deal now I didn't top that that one up with extra juice because there's plenty of juice in, in it. So. Okay. There we go. Wipe it down with a napkin with uh, vinegar on it to break through that sugar because you don't want that sugar compromising your seal in any way. Finger tight my lid. Okay. Nah. Put that one on a little tight. So excited, pretty soon we're gonna be harvesting some garlic out of the garden. And then I look, it looks like potatoes next after that and shortly following that, some, some onions. I've got a couple of peppers out there. That I need to pick. I have a large variety of peppers out there, so. Just a little bit more.
this off with vinegar water. Um, these are half pints, so we will be cooking them for 10 minutes in, in uh, the water bath canner. I eat this every morning almost on uh, two boiled eggs. <laughs> Not boiled eggs, um, like over easy eggs. Because farm fresh eggs are so easy to turn over. If you want to make poached egg, I used to never have any luck with poached eggs, but with my farm fresh eggs, because they're so fresh, um, they make really easy poached eggs. And so if you're trying to avoid any, any extra oils in your diet and stuff like that, it's a great way to do that with poached eggs instead. it when a, a red jalapeno gets in there sometimes because it um it's just a little bit more it just gives it a little color variation okay guys we are done and I have half a jar of a half pint left. I'm gonna go ahead and put this in the fridge and we'll eat that, you know, um, refrigerated. Um, we're not gonna can that. Because you want to make sure that you follow the rules. So if this says half, so it says an eighth of an inch of head space, you, even if this was half an inch of headspace, I wouldn't, I wouldn't can it, because those are the hard, fast rules that are, are that make your, that is how your food is safe. So you want to follow those rules. Um, now we're going to go ahead and get these in our water bath canner over here, and we're going to use our handy, grandy, grippy tools. We're just going to drop them in one by one. water out which is great about this canner I got this canner on Amazon I don't get anything for it if you order it I don't have a link below for it I'm not that channel yet <laughs> I wish I could say I do but... so I'm going to cook these for 10 minutes in my canner Okay, it was at a rolling boil. I want two inches of head space above this. So I want two inches of space above my cans, or above my jars. Um, and once I have that, it's good. Just turn that off, put my lid back on. As soon as it comes back up to a rolling boil, because it always slows down a little bit when you add the jars in there, um, as soon as it comes back up to that rolling boil, that's when I put on my timer for 10 minutes. Okay guys, we are done. My timer just went off, so let's turn off our canner, take off the lid, always putting the lid away from us, and sit for another five minutes in there and cool down a little bit before I take them out. 
Siri, give me a timer for five minutes. Okay, five minutes and counting. Okay, and we'll see you guys back in five minutes when we're pulling these out. Okay guys, it's been five minutes, so let's get those jars out. jars when you use a little bit less. Yeah, well, I could have taken some jalapenos out of the freezer to make more, but I don't need that much, so my husband, Mr. Organizer, found some more on the shelf, so. Okay, there you guys go. Now we're just going to listen for that magical pop, which will happen in just a few minutes. We'll leave the rings on until tomorrow morning. Then we'll take those rings off and then, and then we'll take those rings off and then we'll uh, wash them up really good with soap and water or um, I kind of like to use a little bit of soap and water with a little bit of vinegar in it when it's got this much sugar in it. And then I date them and I always make sure that I date them and label them. Um, it's pretty easy to see what this is in the jar, um, but, um, you know, just to make sure. So, um, so tomorrow morning, I'll, I'll clean these up really nice. There's, there's the first pop. Um, and then I'll just get going on the second pop. Um, they don't, they don't pop or seal actually in the canner. That just brings them up to the heat that they need to seal. It's when they're outside of your canner and you hear that pop, that's when there's some exception to that with, um, pressure canning. Sometimes they will seal in a pressure canner when you have your pressure canner coming down off its heat because you leave them a little longer in the pressure canner afterwards. Um, so, so all of these are gonna pop and seal. If they don't pop, they're not sealed. Um, you can just kind of give it a little push on the lid and see if it's sealed. Um, but that's it, that's it to this recipe. It's actually a really fast recipe as long as you have um, you know, if you were if you were prepping it by hand, it would be a little bit slower, but it's actually a really fast recipe, and that makes it worth doing um, in just whipping together on a Saturday afternoon. Um, and so, I I love this recipe. I literally keep a jar in my fridge at all times, um, and whenever I have some eggs, I throw it on. It's great on a baked potato with some sour cream. Um, oh shoot, you can put it in all kinds of stuff. And I just, I just love this stuff. So um, it's a sweet heat, which is really nice. So check it out. I hope you guys check out this, this recipe and try it for yourself and, and have some fun. And just think of all those things you can add it to. Um, Thank you guys for watching. Please like and subscribe. And as always, God bless. Hello.